So Vercel are releasing their own models now, starting with V0-1.0-MD, just rolls right off the tongue. It seems like they're going to be releasing upgraded versions of this as well as soon as next week, alongside some benchmarks. Now, if you've used V0 before, you know it's particularly strong at web development. And of course, this being Vercel, it's very good at Next.js. It can generate you anything from simple components all the way up to full-on apps and 3JS games. But it seems under the hood to power this, they're not just using custom prompts and RIG pipelines on top of an existing AR provider, they're actually building out their own internal models, which you can now use via the API, so you can add this to your own applications, or even add it to Cursor and Codex to get it to do the coding for you. After you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with AI news, let's take a look at the V0 model. If you want to quickly test what the output of this model looks like, you can actually try it out on the Vicel AI Playground here. You you can see I've got the model selected and I'll say write a modern to-do app using Shadzien components. And what you'll see here is we're generating the thinking tokens first, so we will be able to see its thought process. And then after a while, it's going to go ahead and generate the code for me. And obviously this needs to go through the setup instructions and also generate the various code blocks for the components. It's not going to do what V0 does where it actually hosts the application somewhere and is able to run it. That's something you'd have to build out yourself as this is just the base model that powers V0. But once that's all finished, I can confirm by scrolling up this that this looks pretty similar to all of the code that I've generated in V0 before. And it all looks like very good Next.js and Shadzien code. On the API documentation, you can find out a bit more about this model. As you can see, it is multimodal, so it will support both text and image input. It has autofix, so it identifies and corrects common coding issues during generation. Quick edit means it streams inline edits as they're available. And then the framework aware completions here is what this really excels at, as it's been evaluated on modern stacks like Next.js and Vercel, which makes it really good at web development. In terms of the API itself, as you can see, it is OpenAI compatible, so it can be used with any tool or SDK that supports OpenAI's API format. We see a lot of models going that way. It is super cool to see that they're sort of agreeing on a standard here. In terms of usage limits, as you can see, it has a max context window size of 128,000 tokens and a max output context size of 32,000 tokens. Now, this is in beta at the moment, so sadly, it does have a limit of 200 messages per day, but I imagine at some point that will be lifted and it will just be done on usage-based billing. In terms of using the API, as you can see, this is the endpoint that you're going to need to add this into your applications, or if you're using the AI SDK, they've obviously made that super simple too. So let's go ahead and add this to Cursor and see how it performs there. The first step is to get your API key, which you can do on v0. Dev, just go into your settings, API keys, and create a new key. Now, at the moment, you do need to be a premium or team plan user with usage-based billing turned on, and then you can go ahead and generate your API key here. Once you have your API keys, head over to Cursor and go into the model settings. Now, this is where things are going to get a little bit hacky, and I hope they find a better way to do this in the future when this is out of beta. What we're going to be doing is overriding the OpenAI API and also the API key. So you go to the OpenAI API key section, paste in that V0 API key that we just had, and then also override the base URL with the one from the documentation over here. I'll leave this linked in the description down below. You can hit verify to make sure that this is all working and you can connect to the V0 API. But what's actually going to happen here is any OpenAI model we use is actually going to be using the V0 one instead as it's being routed through the V0 API. What this does mean is you can't use the OpenAI models going forward. You have to come and turn this setting off. So I do hope they find a better way to actually add the V0 model into Cursor itself in the future, which I'm sure they will. This is just a beta. Once you've done that in the settings, all you need to do in Cursor is go into the agent mode, make sure you select an OpenAI model. And to test that it's actually working, you can ask, who are you? And hopefully this replies that it's V0. As you can see, I'm V0 Vercel's AI powered assistant. I help building, debugging and optimizing apps using Vercel's conventions. So let's try build an app with this. Now that we know it's working then, I'm gonna go ahead and give this the same prompt that I actually gave v0.dev earlier to create a modern to-do application using Shadzien components. I'm not gonna set up any Next.js application here. I'm hoping that will do that with commands. Here we go, we're generating a command. I'll go ahead and click run on this one so it creates the Next.js application as we can see in the files over here. Now it wants me to install Shadzien. Now I don't actually believe the install for this is Shadzien UI anymore. I believe it's Shadzien. So it might have some outdated information there. We'll go ahead and install it and see if it works anyway. Initialize Shadzien using the command here. As I said, I believe this command's actually outdated. As you can see here, it actually is giving an error inside of here that says for more information, visit UI Shadzien. And you can see that it's fixed itself. So I guess that's kind of nice that it's done that. I did wish it skipped that step though. And there we go. It's going to go ahead and install these packages, hopefully. With that done, it's now adding in the Shadzien components. Looks like it's adding in a load of them there. And finally, it's going ahead and actually coding the application, setting up the types that we need and building out all of these files. As you can see there, it seemed to do that all in one block there. It didn't stream in. It just made that super quickly. And now it wants to install more packages. And I'm just going to go ahead and run through this process and see what the final output looks like. 
And there we go, after about 10 minutes of waiting there, I imagine this was actually going a bit slower since this API is in beta and a few people are probably testing it out at the moment. But as you can see, it's generated the application for me. This looks like a pretty standard Next.js application. Now I do see a lot of errors going around, but I have actually run the application and I can confirm that it is working. I think a few of these are just type errors that it might need to fix in the next one. As you can see, it tells us what it's generated here, similar to what you'd get on V0. And as I scroll up, you can see that there was a lot of back and forth of it just installing the ShadCN components and me having to click run tool. But I actually never I had to ask this to fix anything. This was all from one single prompt. When I run the application, you can see on the left here, we have the V0 model inside of Cursor. And on the right, I've got the attempt that I did inside of V0.dev. I actually prefer the one on the left. I think it looks better. You can see we've got the theme toggle up here. We have some categories that we can add down here. We can give these any name that we want. We can select our color here. Everything looks really nice. And you can see on the right here, we also have something similar where we can select some categories. We can add a task and do various things like that. Now this one is slightly broken. It doesn't seem like I can add a task yet. That does seem to be an error. So I could go back to V0 and fix it. But to me, the initial result looks really good. If you want a V0-like experience inside a cursor, it seems like you can already achieve that today. There we go. Let me know in the comments if you're excited to try this out and see where it goes. And hopefully one day it gets added to cursor officially. While you're down there, go ahead and subscribe. And as always, see you in the next one.